hello everyone in this video we are just going to implement spi that is serial peripheral interface communication protocol between two at mega 16 microcontrollers let's get started So in the previous lecture, we just demonstrated and configured one of the Atmega 16 microcontroller as SPI master and then we transmitted two different kinds of data from the SPI bus of the same microcontroller. And we are just going to continue from the previous lecture and we are just going to use the same program for the SPI master and now we are just going to write the program and configure another Atmega 16 microcontroller as SPI slave device for receiving those two commands that is sent from the SPI master and react accordingly. So let's do that. So initially we are just going to add another Atmega 16 microcontroller as SPI slave device to the same Proteus simulation circuit. So I am just placing another Atmega 16 microcontroller. So you can see from the previous lecture we have configured this Atmega 16 microcontroller as SPI master and we are just going to configure this Atmega 16 microcontroller as SPI slave. So I am just going to connect SS that is the slave select to the slave select line of the SPI bus MOSI to the data out that is to the MOSI of the SPI bus and MISO to the MISO line of the SPI bus and clock to the clock of the SPI bus. So now you can see to the same SPI bus right over here in the SPI master I have connected the slave device also and in the same SPI bus I have connected the SPI debugger for monitoring the data that is being transmitted from the master and also from the slave and additionally I am just going to add one more LED to the uh, slave device so I am just going to pick up an LED from the pick devices tab type in LED and I am choosing this LED right over here that is LED yellow you can see the device is selected I am placing the LED right over here and I am going to connect the anode of the LED to the PC0 that is the port C 0th pin and other end of the LED that is the cathode terminal I am just going to connect that to the ground of the circuit that's it since we are just going to simulate this project I am not going to connect any resistor between the controller terminal and the anode terminal of the LED in hardware we just want to provide a minimum resistance of 1 kilo ohms between these two terminals and that's it now you can see this is the program that we wrote for the SPI master so this is the function for transmitting data from the master and this is the function for reading the SPI bus data from the master and this is the initialization of SPI bus and this is the initialization of SPI GPI opens and this is the programming logic useful for sending character A over the SPI bus and this is the programming logic for sending character B and now I am just going to create new project for writing the slave program so I am just creating a new project slave I am just going to create another folder with the name SPA slave and here I am just going to select the microcontroller at mega 16 A. Click on OK. Now you can see the project has been created. This is the project that I have created and this is the main.c file I don't want this and now I'm just going to and now I'm just going to the master program I'm opening the main.c file so this is the master program right I'm just going to copy all these programming lines and I'm going to paste it right over here in the slave program 
so that's it you can see i have configured the microcontroller in 8 megahertz format and i have added the delay header for using the inbuilt millisecond and microsecond delay in the atmel studio ide and this is the function for writing data to the spa bus and this is the function for reading from the data bus and only thing is we don't require this in the slave device so i am just deleting this and coming into the programming part you can see in this slave device we just want to configure only this miso pin that is this pin as output and all the other pins must be configured as input so we know that slave is a device which will respond according to the command given by the master so definitely we just want this slave select pin to be input and also this master out slave in pin must be also configured as input and also the clock is usually provided by the master in the spa communication we also we also want this pin to be configured as input so i'm just going to configure this pb7 5 and 4 as input and this miso pin pb6 as output so i'm just going to do that so i just want all these pins right over here as input and i want this pin to be configured as output that is the pp6 so in the master we just made these three pins as output but here we are just making these three pins as input and this pb6 pin as output so logically connecting right now moving on to the spa configuration part by default from the register configuration you can see we just want to enable this spe for using the spa protocol in the atmega 16 megacontroller so we just want this line for enabling the spa protocol in the atmega 16 megacontroller and regarding this mstr we know from the data set of the atmega 16 this mstr when it is given the value 1 it will configure the device as spi master and when we are clearing it it will configure the device as spi slave so initially it will be having the value 0 from the data set so i don't want to do anything to that bit so i'm just deleting this line and along with that we just did this line and this line for configuring the clock of the spa communication and most oftenly the spa clock is provided by the spa master so when you are configuring a device as spa slave you don't want to take care of the clock features so i'm just deleting this line along with this line and that's it you can see we have done with the configuration of the spa slave along with the gpio configuration for the device to act as spa slave and we have written the spa write function and spa read function and now i'm just going to configure this pc0 pin as output for glowing and turning of this led so i'm just going to use the ddrc bit for making the dd c0 as output and immediately after that i'm just going to clear the same port c0 bit for turning off the led initially and after that when coming inside the programming logic what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to check for the data so as usual we are just going to use this spa read for reading the data from the spa bus so data e equal to spa read if data equal to equal to character small a i will be turning on the port c0 and if the data that i received is 
small b i will turn off the led that's it and here i'm just declaring the data variable you can see here i am reading the data from the spi bus and if i receive the data to be small a i will turn on the led which is connected to pc0 make the pc0 pin high and if i receive the data b that is small b i will turn off the led which is connected to pc0 so this is the program that i am going to write i am just compiling this program You can say build is successful our program has no errors and coming to our protein simulation circuit so i have already loaded a program that is the master program over to this microcontroller and i am going to load this slave program to this slave microcontroller so we are just loading two programs to two different microcontrollers so i am configuring the clock of the slave device to be also 8 megahertz and I'm going to the program of this into the slave project files in, inside the inside the debug folder click on this hex file and click on open and click on ok now what will happen is that according to our logic this SPA master will transmit A for the first second and for the second second it will transmit B and it continues and it will be transmitting a b for following seconds and in this slave device we have written a program in such a way that when i receive character small a i will turn on the led which is connected to pc0 and when i receive the character b i will turn off the led so as per the logic that is sent from the spa master this led which is connected to pc0 must be toggling its state for every second so for every one second this led must be toggling its state so for first second it will be turned on and for the second second it will be turned off so it will blink at a rate of one second so this is the logic as per the data sent from the spa master so i am just playing the simulation you can see it is working fine the data is also being transmitted you can see 62 61 62 61 and the LED is blinking at a rate of one second. You can see for every one second the LED is blinking. So thus we have successfully communicated two Atmega 16 microcontrollers through SPI bus. One configured as master and another one configured as slave. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.